Hello everybody, welcome back to our Coffee in Heaven series. Today we're going to do a, a short how-to video uh, which involves uh, replacing the CMOS battery on a Dell GX520 desktop computer, but this information will probably apply to just about any computer with a similar problem. So uh, grab yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, and let's watch the video. Okay, today uh, we're over to Buddy's house here having a little uh, issue with the computer and we think it might be the uh, CMOS battery which uh, runs the internal clock on his uh, Dell Optiplex 520 computer here and so we're going to go ahead and boot it up and uh, we're going to see if the uh, low battery alert message shows up here okay so this is the uh, alert message we were talking about that uh, we're getting because of the low battery voltage it's uh, down here in the fine print towards the bottom and uh, at this point, got to hit F2 to go on into the BIOS and uh, make sure the setup utility has uh, got all the right settings. Okay, we finally got into the BIOS. I wanted want to note that if you are going to change the battery, it's good to get into the system BIOS. In the case of this Dell Optiplex, it's an F2 key. And you're probably smart to... Uh, you know, take some notes of the current settings of your computer just in case when you pull the battery and shut, you know, pull the power to the computer and pull the battery out, you lose some of your, your uh, manually entered settings to configure the computer. So it is possible to do that um, before you pull out the battery and start going through all of your. Uh, all of your uh, diagnostics or just swapping the battery to see if that fixes the problem so that's what I'm going to do here I'm uh, I'll uh, just scroll down here and expand out all the different options and then go through them to uh, see if any of the important uh, settings in these various options are uh, something we might want to take note of other than you know being the factory default settings once uh, you get your settings and your notes about your settings uh, in the event that it does revert to factory default but that doesn't work for you then uh, you're ready to go ahead and pull the plug pop the lid and uh, figure out how to swap out the battery which we'll show you in a few minutes here so I'm going to uh, Pause the recording at this point. Take a few snapshots. Maybe add the snapshots into this uh, into this particular uh, how-to video, and uh, we'll move right along to how to open up this uh, Optiplex and how to locate the battery and uh, swap it out. Okay, so I'm going to hit the exit key to uh, exit out of setup. 
and uh, select the exit option and now it's going to boot back into Windows and as soon as we get into Windows we'll shut down the computer turn it off and uh, go ahead and unplug the power and the uh, VGA cable to the monitor and uh, any of the other cables that are plugged into the various ports on the back of the computer and uh, once we've got it all unplugged we'll uh, go ahead and show you how to pop the lid on this particular computer and how to locate and replace the battery okay so I'm going to hit control alt delete because again this is Windows Professional and I'm going to uh, go into the shutdown options and I'm going to make sure I've got the full shutdown options selected and hit OK and that'll shut her down uh, yeah, that's fine okay so here's the computer I'm gonna pop it out of the uh, side desk here this fella uh, first I'm going to remove the uh, VGA cable. Hopefully this is all showing up on the screen here. And uh, in this particular computer, it looks like uh, got a fairly straightforward set of uh, connections. Uh, they've already moved the VGA cable. It's got a power cable, which is the black one, on the far left. And it's got an Ethernet cable plugged into the Ethernet port. And it's got a cable for the keyboard. And we're running a wireless mouse on this particular computer, so there's no cable for the mouse. So, since the computer is now off, I'm going to first unplug the power. And that'll uh, kill power to the motherboard and everything. You'll notice on this computer there was a little orange light there for a moment, but now the orange light's gone out, so power has been drained. And uh, then I'm going to pull out the Ethernet cable, and I'm going to pull out the uh, keyboard cable. And now we can uh, move it to someplace more comfortable to operate on, so that's where we're going to go next. Okay, the uh, nice thing about these older model Dell Optiplexes is they are a piece of cake to open up and uh, fool around inside. So, right here is a latch release that pops the top. Just pull that out, the top comes up, and lift the top out and out. And away you go, you are uh, got access to your internals. I'm going to get a little different camera angle going here and uh, we'll show you where the battery is in this particular unit. Okay, so here is looking down towards the disk drive and the battery on this unit is hiding underneath this disk drive, which is easy to remove on these Dell Octoplexes if we have to get it out of there, but I'll zoom in here and uh, with a little luck we can see where the battery is located. And there it is, it's about the size of a nickel. And uh, it's the uh, CR2032. Yep, you can see the numbers on it pretty good there if you're looking closely. And so that's the battery that we've uh, gone out and purchased at Walmart. So we're going to now try and uh, see if we can pop that battery out um, without necessarily getting the disk drive out of the way. Well, we uh, can't get in there with our fingers and get it out. Uh, without popping the disk drive, then I'll go ahead and pull the disk drive also. Okay, well we've decided that uh, with uh, big male hands it's hard to get down in there, so I'm going to go ahead and back off the uh, footage here and we'll show you how to release the disk drive and set it out of the way. In this particular case you just grab the two blue uh, clips, alligator type clips, and you just squeeze them together lift up on the back of your disk drive and uh, this hook fits into the slot there just set it up out of the way and bingo you've got easy access to the battery that's how to get access to your battery which again is right here now I'm going to see how hard it is to open the clip on this little puppy and see if we can just weasel it out of there 
it's trying to come out for me but it's there we go so there's a little metal release clip that if you just pinch it fast and hard it kind of pops the battery up and out of the way for you okay so uh, let's grab the new battery and we'll stick it in there and uh, we should be good to go on the remove and replace battery part of this uh, how-to video okay I uh, wanted to show you one of the new features of the modern day battery you'll notice that thanks to government regulations the battery price has now increased about 50 cents so that they can put this little harmful if swallowed sticker on to tell the morons of the world uh -huh. not to stick this battery in your mouth and swallow it otherwise it might take a couple days to come out the other end okay peel that off you need to peel that off to get electricity to your computer <laughs> <laughs> I love government regulations. But anyway, you want the uh, plus sign on the new battery to be up, just like it was on the old battery. So here we go. We'll stick that puppy in, snap it down. With a little luck, now the battery is ready to rock and roll. Take the disk drive, hook the front latch into the uh, slot, line up the two get alligator prongs and uh, with a little luck it just clips right back where it came from and now you're uh, ready to put your lid back on and we'll try to monkey around here and make fools of ourselves doing that because I don't remember which was which after turning the computer around <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> so looks like uh, we put it on this direction. <laughs> yeah, There's good. three three little prongs here go into the three slots, and uh, I don't know how much of this is showing up, but she's back together. Okay. Bravo. With a little luck, we saw some of that along with the fine grain in the coffee table and everything else. No scratches on the coffee table. <laughs> All sorts of warnings and exceptions to think about here. Okay, so now we'll take it back into the office and uh, do the reverse. We'll plug all the cables back in and see if this puppy boots up directly or if we have to monkey around with the BIOS settings, which we took our long and extensive notes of before we did any of this. So here we go uh, into the next uh, step of the operation. Okay, now I'm uh, going to plug uh, the cables that we had back in, plug in the keyboard. In. Again, the Ethernet cable, and uh, we can't quite get the uh, VGA cable in on this guy yet until we move it up a little closer. But we'll get the power on, and last but not least, we'll uh, see if we can get this VGA cable hooked up so we can see what we're doing when we boot this sucker. It'll take a little bit for it to boot up here, so let's just hang loose, see what happens. Yeah, I guess you've noticed already that we're running uh, Microsoft Windows XP on this machine, so it's XP Professional actually. And uh, as you know, a little bit older model year computers are usually the ones that have uh, issues with the low uh, CMOS battery and this time we don't look like we got the problem 